This is a 1965 Corvette convertible with a removable hardtop. And one of the features about this is it has a plexiglass window. And over time, these plexiglass windows through just normal wear and tear, they become filled full of swirls and scratches and then they become hazy when the sun hits it and it's hard to see through. Plus it takes away from the beauty of the car. Now, plexiglass is a very soft plastic. So keep that in mind if you go to work on any plastic that it's not the same as working in, on harder plastics like Lexan. But plexiglass was used in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s on cars and boats. Very easy to work with once you know the tools and the products in the process. So I'm gonna run through that right now. So I've already taped off the gasket here between the chrome trim and the plexiglass window itself. And I've already buffed out that side and the inside. I actually sanded the inside, buffed it out clear, and then for a live broadcast on the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel, I sanded down and buffed out that side clear. So now I just gotta finish this for the owner so he can come pick up his car. Uh, but I wanted to make a video to show the process in case you missed the live broadcast. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to be sanding, and I like to do what I call edge a panel. So what that means is I'm gonna take this little Flex PXE80, we call it the Pixie. It has a six millimeter drive unit on it. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna machine sand just, whoops, just the edges, and that's called edging the panel. And the reason for that is this small lightweight sander is a lot easier to maneuver and sand with precision than a larger six inch DA. So I'm gonna go around and hit all the edges first, then I'll come back with the six inch DA, knock out the big uh, easy to sand areas. And at some point we'll get to using a wool pad and the Dr. Beasley's NSP primers to pull out the sanding marks. So first thing to do, always make sure this thing is centered. By the way, uh, just a unique characteristic about the, uh, this is the Eagle Abrasives by Kovacs sanding system. And the Velcro hook on this interface pad is microscopic in size and that keeps the sanding action completely flat. Now this is more important when doing custom sanding on custom paint jobs because you're trying to level orange peel. But the same theory applies here. Okay, so this has a speed setting of one to four. Um, I'm gonna bump this all the way up to four for this sanding, so here we go. And you can see just how fast this thing starts taking plastic off. Now, as you're sanding, you wanna keep a clean microfiber towel handy and wipe off the sanding dust from where you've sanded and also off the face of the disc, just like this. Just turn it on and then take and um, pull this to the side and it'll actually pull all that sanding dust off. And the reason you wanna do that is because you get better sanding action with the clean disc than with one that's loaded up with the material you're sanding. Okay, back up to the four. Every time you turn off this pixie, it automatically goes to the next lowest setting. So it never stays on the setting four. It'll go to three, two, and one, but it won't stay on four. And that's so if you're doing paint correction with it, that you don't uh, turn it on and then sling product everywhere. So it doesn't really apply to sanding, but um, just a little note about that. Okay, and then what I'm looking for is I'm looking just to see a uniform sanding mark pattern and all the deeper scratches have been removed. For example, this has some deeper gouges right here. It looks like somebody rubbed something or wiped something on here that was contaminated, put some deeper scratches. And so buffing alone won't fix this. So that's why I tend to want to sand these if you want to get them perfect. And the owner of this car does want it perfect, but he doesn't want to replace it because he wants to keep it all original. Let's see. This is a 1500 grit sanding disc, and I'm gonna follow this with a 2500 grit to refine the 1500 grit, just to make it easier to buff those types of sanding marks out. Plexiglass, because it's soft, it buffs very easy, uh, but you don't wanna create a lot of heat. So it's always better to sand to the highest grit level your budget will allow, and then start buffing versus finishing out at a low grit and spending a lot more time buffing and at the same time uh, creating a lot of heat. With this plastic, it'd probably take quite a bit of heat, but you could deform it, so you wanna be careful of that. Okay, so that's what I call edging a panel. 
I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a fresh 1500 grit sanding disc. This is the Eagle Abrasives by Kovacs. <laughs> come up off there. Okay. And this is the Flex FX3411 cordless DA sander. And uh, that's a piece of 3000 grit from uh, doing the other side there. And uh, again, this has a unique uh, interface pad with the microscopic hook. And then of course it matches to the matching sanding disc in 1500 grit. Now this is what I mean by edging a panel. So doing the complicated, harder part first, and now I can just come back with this and quickly knock out the middle section. So there's sand with a 1500. Again, you can see all the plastic coming off on the disc to clean that. Just rub it across the microfiber towel like that. It's clean, ready to go. Remove the sanding dust here so you don't just load up the paper when you go to sand again. And there we go. Now, you probably can't see this from where you're at, but now that I've sanded it, these deeper scratches are more exposed or visually easier to see. So I'm gonna keep sanding this until they completely disappear. Okay, just about got them completely out of there. Make a couple more passes, then I'll start refining. And of course, you should be wearing a respirator anytime you're doing dry sanding like this. Um, I kind of find that uh, trying to wear a respirator and talk through a microphone uh, to be very awkward and cumbersome and also interferes with the, uh, the audio. So, okay, a couple more passes. And you don't want to sand too long in one place or you can create a deformation or a visual imperfection. So what I teach people is to do is use a crosshatch pattern overlapping by 50%. And by doing this, you do what's called UMR, Uniform Material Removal. You'll remove just as much material here as you do here, as you do here, as you do here, as you do here. Uh, uniform material remover, UMR. So that's the kind of the goal. Okay. I just, a couple more passes and I think we're done with this. And I am gonna call that good. Okay. So now we're done with the 1500 disc. I'm going to go back to the, uh, what I call a peanut polisher, the little pixie here. I'm going to switch this over to 2500. It's always important to center these up so no portion of the interface pad touches the surface you're sanding. Back up to the floor setting. Now this step goes pretty fast because I'm not really trying to remove any defects or flatten down the surface texture. I've already did that with the 1500 grit. What I'm doing now is I'm basically just refining 1500 to 2500, so it'll be easier and faster to buff out plus safer. And for that, it only takes a few passes. And it's really important whenever you're sanding that you do a awesome job of refining your sanding marks. Because what happens if you don't, when you go to pull out your sanding marks, the shallow ones will buff out really fast. And what remains are the deeper ones. And then you'll really struggle to remove those. And that's where you start to generate a lot of heat. And when working on car paint, that's when you, you risk burning through the paint job. If it's a clear coat, burning through the clear coat. If it's a single stage, burning through the single stage and exposing primer. Okay, so that is edged with 2500. And now I'm going to switch back over to the six inch sander. 
And I don't have 2,500. I used it all up in my last class, so I'm going to go to 2,000. That'll still refine 1,500. And then I'm going to finish out with 3,000. There we go. And you can see a fresh 2,000 disc after cutting with 15 really gets in there and cuts fast. More paint on the disc, just take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and make one more set of overlapping passes and I'll call this part good. And we'll switch over to uh, 3,000. Very uniform. In fact, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but each time you go up in grit or go to a less aggressive grit, that plastic will actually start to uh, become more clear. Okay. So that's our 2000 disc. And now to finish out, I'm going to go to a 3000 grit sanding disc. They call this the black. Okay. I don't have 3,000 in uh, three inch or I would have uh, edged the panel a third time. So now I'm just gonna get kind of close using the six inch. And even 3,000, look how much plastic I'm pulling off with this little cordless DA. Okay, so I went over that twice. I think I'll hit it one more time. As someone that's done a lot of sanding in his life, I understand the value of um, finishing out at a high grit, refining your sanding marks, and for the sole purpose of making the buffing go faster. It's easier to sand than it is to buff. Okay, there we go. sanding step is done and now it is time to switch over to a rotary polisher with a wool pad to pull out my sanding marks. I'm going to do a little section just here in the center just to start with uh, just to show you how the before and after difference will look. Okay so anytime you're going to use a wool pad it's always a good idea to take a spur and clean this thing. I was using this yesterday with the Dr. Beasley's NSP-150, so that residue in there is the same residue as what I'm going to use right now, the abrasive technology. And I'm just going to put a strip of product here. A lot of people aren't sure how to use a rotary posture. I'm telling you, this is like a scalpel in the hands of a surgeon. You can do so much with it. So now I'm going to just take and bring my speed down. I'm going to pick up this strip of product, spread it out, and start buffing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I got all excited to start uh, buffing and I forgot I was going to do a little spot so you can see this amazing contrast between dull sanded plexiglass and polished out plexiglass. But hopefully even from that far away with the camera you can see the difference. I will take the camera and get a good uh, share big, a really good before and a really good after so you can see the difference close up. Okay, so the next thing I would do is I just want to inspect Looks like I got out the majority. I still need to do some edge work here and get this corner over here. So for that, I'm just gonna put a little product right along these edges. And the thing about using a rotary for edges is you wanna make sure you got some compound product on there. So I'm just gonna kind of walk this in a little bit like that. So they're lubricated with two things, lubrication obviously, but also the abrasive technology. Now I'm gonna come in, go up on edge and just kind of work these edges out. And what I'm doing is I'm, sand, as I'm buffing, I can use the overhead lights and I can see when the sanding marks have been removed. Okay, it looks like I got them all. I'm gonna do another quick pass just to make sure there's still some right there in the, the, the peak of that convex curve, which I didn't really spend a lot of time on. 
And it's really important at this step to get all of your sanding marks out. Uh, they typically don't come out with a foam pad and a polish. You know, you need the more aggressive bite of the NSP 150 to actually pull those sanding marks all the way out. That looks good. Okay, so now that the sanding marks are removed, let me just go ahead and inspect real quick to make sure. Oh no, I missed some. It's okay, that's why you have a light to inspect. There's some right here, and there's some right there. So we'll just take and mark these like that. Come back, clean that pad real quick. The edges, by the way, are usually the most difficult part just because, you know, you've got this radius molding there and tape over a rubber gasket. And the way you do that is you just go in there and just shove the edge of that buffer in there and let it do its thing. You want to be careful not to generate too much heat. Okay, so all the sanding marks have been removed. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the Beast. This is the Flex XC3401 VRG also known as the Beast. It has an eight millimeter gear driven orbital. And you can oftentimes hear the gears here. Hear the gears. So it's not, it's not a free spinning tool. I'm gonna do a finish polish with this Harbor Freight. This is a free spinning tool. So that's kind of the difference between a gear driven orbital and a free spinning orbital. Now for that, I'm gonna switch over to the Dr. Beasley's NSP 95. So the Dr. Beasley's NSP line, we have the 150, we have the 95 and the 45. And what these stand for are the size of the microns of the abrasive technology, which is perfectly round spheres with facets throughout the whole outside of it. And that means 100% of the abrasive is cutting no matter what angle or what position it's on on the surface. And all these are also completely inorganic. So in the car detailing world, after you use them on paint, you can go right to the coating. You don't have to use a panel wipe. But this also works great on soft paints and like this, soft plastic. So this will pull out the holograms from the fibers of the wool pad. Okay, I think that was a total of four section passes. And from what I can see myself personally, just right here, this back window is now flawless. But I like to practice and preach show car quality work. And anytime you're finishing out with a gear driven tool, that's fine on, on harder paints or harder plastics, but on softer paints, and in this case, a softer plastic, you tend to get better results by using a free spinning tool because there's some slippage there. So then I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This is a, Harbor Freight, uh, they call it a six inch DA. Basically it's a copy of the Porter cable. So it's an eight millimeter orbit stroke length in a free spinning polisher. So, and anytime you're looking at an orbital polisher, you can usually see an outer perimeter and an inner perimeter and that space between them, that's the orbit stroke length. That's what they mean when it's an eight millimeter or 15 millimeter or 25 millimeter. Okay, so for this, we're gonna switch over to the NSP45. This is like a finishing polish. This is also what I would use to finish out on any flexible plastic window, like a Jeep convertible top window. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn this all the way up to the six setting. There 
we go. That, I guarantee you, is a flawless, hologram-free, swirl-free, and scratch-free plexiglass window. And then for the final step, I'm going to apply the Dr. Beasley's Nano Resin MX coating. Now, normally I use these little foam blocks, but I'm just gonna use a little foam applicator pad that I've marked so I can um, use opposite ends so I'm not co-contaminating or cross-contaminating the chemical itself. So this is the side for the paint correction, so, or paint builder, paint coating builder. A couple spritzes on there. And this actually, what it does is it creates anchor points for the coating to bond to for a stronger bond, thus longer long, long, longevity from the coating itself. And you're supposed to wait two to three minutes for it to do its little magic on the surface. Um, but whenever I shoot videos like these, I know people have short attention spans. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to show you the process, then wipe it off, clean microfiber towel. And then the next step of this is the actual ceramic coating. I'm gonna go back over here. I use the, the P side, so now I'm gonna use the coating side. And for this, I'm just gonna apply a few drops of this product right onto the foam and then apply the coating. And then this, the flash time or the wait time on this is right about 30 seconds to a minute. So you don't have to wait very long. It bonds instantly to the surface. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna not only protect it, but it's gonna make it very slippery and hydrophobic. So it'll stay cleaner longer. And moving forward, anytime the owner washes or wipes this car, it's gonna clean faster, easier, and safer. And as I'm wiping, I can tactically feel that surface go very, very slippery. And that is it. Okay, that's the process to restore the plexiglass window on vintage hardtops like the 65 Corvette. Also works awesome on uh, vintage ski boats with the plexiglass. Um, I've seen it used on airplane windows, helicopter bubbles. So uh, the, you can use it on pretty much anything, but just make sure it says plexiglass. And if you were to come down here and look really closely right here in the actual corner of this window, it says plexiglass. So I know this is plexiglass. Plus I got a lot of experience with this. Anyway, that's the process. If you've got any questions, uh, reach out to me, Mike at drbeasleys.com. I always share my cell phone number, 760-515-0444. You can get all these products up at drbeasleys.com. I'm gonna stick a fork in this, call it done. <laughs>